Krista, for coming. I'm glad to have you here today. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the next episode in our interview series. I'm Lauren Hillman with Theatrix, and today we're going to be interviewing Krista. And I'd like to start, Krista, with just telling everyone what it is that you do. Okay, so, uh, yeah, hi, I'm Krista, and uh, I work as the Technical Operations Manager at the Evergreen Cultural Center in Coquitlam. Cool, that's a place I know a lot of the kids we teach will know, they'll know the place. So what exactly is it that you do there? What's your job like? It, okay, so, uh, so a Technical Operations Manager covers two different areas. The technical part of it, is refers to the theater work that we do, um, helping out with lighting and sound and building sets. Um, and then the operations side of my job is the work that I do to take care of the whole building itself. So, and sometimes that means just changing light bulbs or doing plumbing or taking care of the air conditioning um, and and everything else involved in making sure that the building is safe and usable for the people that come in. Cool. Now, I know that's your current job. What about all the, the, the jobs you've had between when you started and getting up here? Um, the ones that you had in the, in the industry, what kind of steps did you go through? Uh, I started in the industry a very, very long time ago. Um, I did a little bit of acting when I was a child which shh, nobody <laughs> was in the days before uh, cell phone cameras and social media. So no one has a record of that. Um, and so when I, but when I started uh, as a technician, uh, I spent a lot of time volunteering for different community groups. I did a lot of, of amateur theater. Um, one of my very first shows was a Christmas Carol out at Langley Players, which still exists, and um, so I have a very deep fondness for that space. And um, and then I I just gradually worked my way up by reaching out to other people in the community um, until I eventually came to Evergreen, and I actually started at Evergreen as a volunteer. I volunteered here for three years as a technician. That's awesome. That's a great way to, to go about getting started in a lot of fields. Uh, my question for you, I guess, would be when you were approaching people about uh, helping out at their theater, what kind of skills did you have that you were offering them? And what kind of skills would you suggest kids develop if they wanted to, to follow in your footsteps? As a kid, I was very mechanically inclined anyway. I was coming in with, with at, the, at the very least, um, just like a basic knowledge of how to use tools and how to handle things, right? Not a not a huge deep understanding of engineering, but but the stuff that it that was in my house, hammers and and wrenches and screwdrivers, I knew how to use them because I was allowed to build things. Um, and but beyond that, the the most important thing was I was absolutely willing to work and I was absolutely willing to learn. Um, there was no time when I said, eh, I'm not really interested in that, so I'm not going to do it. Cool. And I can see that that's provided a lot of opportunities for you. Um, is your job in general very creative or more um, technical still? Uh, it is a combination of both. So because we have a variety of groups that come in some of them know exactly what they want to do they they have a plan they come in with a lighting plot or sound files and they say this this is how the show goes can you please press the button and make it happen sure we can totally do that um and then the other half of groups that come in they have more of a vision about what they have an idea of what they want to do and they say i'd i'd like to have this sunset on stage and then they need us to help them figure out how to do that so we have lots of room to be creative uh, in our regular work. Why don't you tell us a couple um, cool design things that you've done in the past either from a real long time ago I know you've even won awards with uh, stuff that you've done with theatrics so maybe tell us about some of those creative projects that you've worked on and how you went about making the, the decisions. 
Okay, 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 okay. Um, so, so we have a group that does a, a regular performance here, usually in the summer, and uh, and the director comes to me and says, okay, so he, I, here's the script I have. These are the, the ideas that I have in my mind. And the, the first thing we need to do is sort of sit down and look at it on a practical level. And when I mean practical, I'm talking about how much time something would take to do, how much money it would cost to buy the materials to do it, and whether that's something that we have the knowledge to do. Now we're able to like learn stuff, absolutely, but do we have the time and the money to learn it? So there's a practical side of it. But beyond that, then we get, start to get excited about what the director has in mind. Last year, one of the scenes in the play, so one of the scenes in the play had to do with the story of Baba Yaga, which is a, she's a witch who lives in a house with chicken legs. And the director wanted Baba Yaga to be able to walk through and out of her house with chicken legs. And so we sat down and said, okay, how are we going to build this house? And we looked at some of the materials that we already had here at Evergreen. And we had some wood. We have big sheets of coroplast plastic that we can that we can cut into shape. And we were able to make this fantastic awkward looking house with a chimney and everything but these two big fat chicken legs on the bottom um and just by using stuff that we already had in sight covering it in paint and fabric and and hiding the broken bits with tape and um and and it turned out very cool i was pretty proud of it interesting it sounds like you have a lot of fun stuff there and i know you are at work right now uh, anything you can can show us? Oh well, okay. So right now, I'm gonna move my camera. Um, we are actually because it's a little quiet here. We're in the middle of maintenance. So if you look over my shoulder here, you can see. Oh, there goes the light. Um, yeah. That is all of our lights that we normally use in the theater. They're on the floor because we have just cleaned them all. Um, so they're ready to go back up. And if I rotate, whoops, sorry, rotate around, you can see all of our seating here. And if you look up at the back, if you can see that black rectangle, that is the windows to our booth. Let's talk about kind of how a person might um, go about getting into the technical side of theater. What skills would they need to have? What education? What should a kid who's interested in, in going this direction do? Well, uh, when it comes to education, that's pretty straightforward. Um, you'll find as you go through school and you get into high school, there's lots of drama classes available, um, and you should absolutely take part in them. Even if you want to be a technician, it's, it's good to take drama so that you can understand how an actor is working in their performance. Just like an actor should also take technical training so they can understand what it takes to put on a show. Yeah. Um, but the, the most important place for a kid to start, uh, is to, to volunteer and every community has some kind of theater in it. And, and the people who work there, the technicians like me are always willing to have you come out and be a part of what we're doing. We have a huge work experience program here and we're constantly taking kids, um, that, that is the best place to start because in our industry, one of the most important things is how you connect with other people. They want to see how well you work. They want to know that you're the type of person who's willing to do a job well. I can totally see that. Uh, it's the, in this case, it's something where the skills can be taught, but the work ethic can't. And then you can teach them how to use the equipment. I can teach anybody how to use the equipment. That's easy. So I don't know if a lot of kids at home know this, but lighting design is an actual awards category in the theater. So it's it's another creative aspect of theater that not necessarily everybody thinks about when they're when they're younger. Krista, if you were designing lighting for a show, what are some of the things that you would think about uh, artistically that would you know elevate the show and really help make the lighting unique, interesting, special in some way? 
Okay. Well, uh, when I'm planning lighting design for a show, obviously the first thing I'm going to do is look through the script and see what the script tells me about the show. So um, I'm, I'm looking at what time of day things happen. I'm looking at, at the environment that they're in. Are we inside an apartment or are we outside in a park? Um, that if it's a comedy or a tragedy. Um, there's different lighting styles for dance. There's different lighting styles for musicals. Um, and the colors that you choose when you're doing your lighting, the angles that you choose when you're doing their lighting all add to the feeling that the audience gets when they watch it. So Krista, before we go, last question for the day, I guess. Um, I just want to know if you have any last words of wisdom or tips for kids who are thinking of going this direction. You're a pro. <laughs> um, always be willing to make things. Like get out into your garage, get into your junk drawer, be creative with materials that you can get your hands on. The more that you get used to using tools and and trying stuff out, the, the more muscle memory that you'll have to do those things. Um, and and take advantage of opportunities. So when somebody says, hey, you want to come and do this, say yes. 